Welcome to the Even Better Podcast, where your host, Seneca Waugh of Your Clear Next Step, brings you exciting content about making communities better by helping people get even better at work. Welcome, everyone, to the Even Better Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Seneca Waugh, and on behalf of all of us at Your Clear Next Step, we're so delighted to have you join in to this podcast, an opportunity to help you make your workday better by hearing from and, and learning from some folks in our area here in central Iowa who've just really found a wonderful way to talk about growth. And so I am so delighted. It's my honor to introduce to you today our guests, Kim Gratney and Dustin Gratney. Kim and Dustin, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. We've had, for those of you who've been listening already, you've had a chance to hear from Kim before. And Kim and I were talking in our last conversation. Kim is the lead at Full Circle Creative and Coaching. And uh, we talked about the support that she gets and the partnership that she finds uh, from her husband, Dustin, who runs Gratney Livestock. And the, the opportunity that those two have to work together and to collaborate and to support one another in these different disciplines. And in part of our conversation, conversation last time, Kim shared a nugget about um, discomfort. And I don't even remember when in the conversation it happened, but she talked about the things that she learned or the, the stretches that had happened in her own life by stepping into discomfort. And so we had this conversation about, we got to talk about this more. And she said, well, we can't talk about it then without Dustin. So here we are. And I'm so delighted to have this opportunity to just talk about six ways that life is enriched by stepping into discomfort. So before we get into that, maybe Kim and and Dustin, I have you introduce yourselves just a little bit, just set the context of of what you do. I mean, we'll start with Dustin, set the context of what you do in your daily, your day-to-day work, and maybe how that brought you to this conversation of discomfort. We'll just sort of tee it up with what what you do on a day-to-day basis and how that dovetails with what Kim does. Right. Well, we have five children that we raise together. And along with that, we have a farm and a livestock business where we raise horses and bucking bulls and cattle dogs and every other critter that you can think of. And through that process of working and training horses for many years, we kind of learned that it's it's hard to have a relationship without being willing to be vulnerable and that has spawned the collaboration of the two businesses, I guess. So, Fantastic. Thank you. And Kim, as we sort of talked about this before, the idea of stepping into discomfort, is there any way, do you, do you have a desire to, to tee up this conversation? And as we get going to six ways, life is enriched by stepping into discomfort. I appreciate that question, Seneca. I'm just amazed and continue to be humbled by how big the gap is between a willingness to learn and grow and the discomfort that comes with it that is necessary, yet sometimes overwhelming. And so as I've stepped into that in my business space with Full Circle, I'm grateful for Dustin's encouragement about one of the six topics of enduring through that because it's way easier to give up. For sure. For sure. I, I know as a fellow business owner, I, there, those early days, man, there are some tough days and, and you know, it doesn't stop with the early days. There are later days too, that wind up being really <laughs> tough and, and giving up would be easier and challenging yourself to go new directions and breaking into spaces that you've not been in before. That's, that's hard stuff. It's uncomfortable. It is, it is discomfort. And I'm, I just, I'm so intrigued by this topic because I know that our listeners as as we think about our audience and, and those who are listening, there are business owners, there are people who are part of the corporate culture and, and go to work every day as, as part of a corporate organization. There are people in small business, there are educators, there are artists, there are all kinds of listeners. And we all have the opportunity to have our lives enriched by stepping into discomfort. So let's let's go there. Let's talk about six ways that life is enriched by stepping into discomfort. And this started part of your your strategy development, right? So talk talk to us about that. Yes. So with the strategy behind this, it's really about being encouraging to others so that first of all, people recognize that discomfort is okay. And it is absolutely essential to growth because I think we're so used to everything being a certain way and us being able to 
orchestrate things and then just kind of float about, right? Go do life on autopilot and avoid what's uncomfortable or difficult and then look for the easy road. And when we do that, it just gets harder and harder to reframe or rethink growth opportunities and be willing to have the tenacity and the willingness to step into discomfort. Mm -hmm. Setting so much of our instincts are to make sure that we that we're heard and that people take us seriously and and that our voice is so the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? <laughs> and so sometimes understanding the truth, but sitting with it and not necessarily sharing it is one of the hardest things to do, you know, so till the time is right, or maybe, it, maybe it won't be right. But we have a saying that's not ours, it's a friend of ours, but it is the, you can be right, or you can be effective. And so sometimes sitting with that discomfort of just being still and waiting for the opportunity if it ever comes to share the truth is hard, you know, especially in, in our culture. Right. So. Absolutely. Well, and that, even that idea of just sitting with it, there are so many of us who are doers and problem solvers that <laughs> there's a problem, there's a discomfort. We don't want to sit with it. We want to solve it. We want to fix it. We want to make it better. And then those who are nurturers, right. You don't want to, you want to sit with discomfort. You want to nurture, you want to comfort, you want to soothe. And, and so that, that idea of sitting with, does that, that really resonates with me, the idea of sitting with discomfort and seeing what transformation can come out of that. It's just, just super powerful. So what are these six ways that life is enriched by stepping into discomfort? I think the, the first one that you cited was we learn to let go. What does that mean? How do you, how do you learn to let go by stepping into discomfort? Well, it's, you know, I've learned lately or through life that it's really selfish to try to take on everything yourself, you know. My mom used to say, let people be a blessing to you. Mm -hmm. You know, if you deny someone helping you, you're denying them to be a blessing too. So really sitting back and letting people come alongside you and things is okay. You know, it's, and if it doesn't get done right or exactly the way you think it should be, that's okay too. You know, they're putting out effort to be a part of your life and, and it's hard to have a relationship with somebody if you don't let them help or at least let them feel as though they have value, you know, so yeah, just sitting back and, and letting other people help. <laughs> letting Okay. So it's, it's that kind of letting go. It's the kind of letting go that is particularly challenging for the control freaks out there. <laughs> uh, I, I don't even bother with, I'm a recovering control freak. I know who I am. And so that, the letting, letting someone else help, letting someone else serve delegating that's, that's uncomfortable. And, and I can see how that's a, that's a part of stepping into to discomfort. Yes. In fact, during coaching sessions, that's one of the most frequently discussed obstacles for people to lead the way they envision leading is that they are so bogged down and in the weeds with so much because the act or art of delegating is so hard that they're missing out on attending to other things as they grow in their leadership. And learning to let go of that control of how things are done and recognizing that when they do delegate, it's a beautiful opportunity to let go. But that is one of the most frequently addressed challenges that we see in leadership formation. Absolutely. So I recall hearing you use the, the phrase, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? <laughs> there's, there's multiple ways to do things. And of course, so just minor disclaimer, I have to set aside the fact that there is clearly, as everyone knows, only one way to fold a towel and only one way to load the dishwasher. <laughs> so as long as we can set those two aside and we can enjoy the fact that there are multiple ways, I jest, of course. So what do you mean? <laughs> what, what kind of discoveries have you made in that, that discomfort in, in sitting with and stepping into that discomfort? How does that help you see other ways? How, how does that help you see that there's more than one way to skin a cat? What, what goes on there? Yeah. If you back up a little bit, there's people are only going to take in so much. So if you want to have some impact in people's lives, you know, letting them try something and it may not be the way that it that's best or more sufficient or that you would do it, but for them, it was effort and they'll grow in that if they want, you know, if, if they make that discovery, it'll sink in. And so giving them one thing at a time to think about, it's pretty rare 
that someone can take two completely new things and move forward with both of them with some consistency or even efficiency. So giving them one thing and letting the rest go and, and however they get it done is that's fine, you know, so. I feel like you must model this on a fairly regular basis, right? If I understand you correctly, Dustin, what you do, right? With Grattany livestock, you, you raise livestock. And then what Kim does with full circle creative and coaching is, is with the horse guided coaching, other people are interacting with the livestock that you have, and they're kind of doing it their way, which may not be the way you were trained to do. I mean, that, that that's a bunch of variables. So are you, are you stepping into that discomfort on a, on a nearly daily basis when, when you're doing the work that you do? Yeah, I think along with the clients, kids have really helped broaden that perspective. You know, when it used to be when I'd train a horse, you know, we, there was definitely a right way to do it. And, and I, and I still think there's an efficient way to do it. But when you put your kid on that horse and you got to watch him make all the mistakes over again that you made the last 30 years, you know, and, and let them do it and work through it, it's, it's humbling, you know, to, and, and you thinking, well, they're messing up that horse and it's, I'm going to have to retrain that horse. And I think that's discrediting the horse's ability to learn and adapt and the kid, you know, that's how they become adults is they make those mistakes and that horse is safe and, and he'll pick up right where you left off with him, even if he learns something different with somebody else, you know, so it is kind of hard to let go, but it, but it's, it's the only way really, you know, so. Oh, that's beautiful. Well, so I'm going to keep us moving here. So we're talking about six ways that life is enriched by stepping into discomfort. And the first one we learn to let go, and perhaps we learn to let go of some controlling tendencies and find other ways. But you've talked about another one, and that is relationships deepen. Let's spend some time there. What what do you mean by that? Relationships deepen when you step into discomfort. This is more of a result of the discomfort. You know, who doesn't want that friend that's patient and sits there calmly and you know, is loving and, and willing to be quietly frustrated. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think it's just a byproduct of all these. Uh, that's, that's a really peaceful one to sit with, you know, so mm. simple, but. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kim, I, I think you've, you've shared, you, you alluded to having some experience in this space and that the relationship part was, was something that was really meaningful to you. Jump, jump right on in. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I think when we're able to put our self-focus aside and recognize the impact of just the gift and the blessings of each relationship that we're a part of. And we think about letting go and we think about the qualities that occur with that dynamic as opposed to trying to control things and create certain outcomes and show up in a very regimented and discipline is good, but, but so regimented and so closed minded that it's very off putting to those around us. And so letting go allows the deepening of relationships because we're putting ourselves in an incredibly vulnerable position where we put ourselves last instead of first, and we make it more about another. And that obviously can happen in both the workplaces and our personal relationships. Yet, I think we're often such drivers in the workplace that we don't recognize the opportunity that exists to deepen those relationships by letting go of our agendas and being focused on what's in the best interest of this other individual. And that ties right back to something as simple as delegating. So when we don't delegate because we're too uncomfortable to see what would happen, we've removed the learning opportunity for that other person. So then how are they going to grow and evolve into their own leadership? The shift from self to others. You bet. Well, I I think you've made some points before as well about authenticity. And you think about today and and the social media and the airbrushing and the filtering (laughs) that we can do so that everybody's picture on social media is perfect. And we're all, you know, happy families and everything's going great. And everybody's world is just rosy. 
Mm-hmm. Well, if we're sitting in or sitting with or stepping into and then sitting with discomfort and someone is near who cares about us, aren't that, that vulnerability, right? We're being more authentic mm-hmm. and more vulnerable. Do, do you see results out of that as well? Yes. And I think that it comes from not only someone's willingness to set the example of what it looks like to sit in discomfort, but I also think it comes from people who are witnessing or observing this being willing to explore that versus look past it to be a doer, to continue forcing and driving the business model at hand, because that's where we see relationships faltering. We have a particular activity that we do with the horses where the human is leading the horse with only the vision of that particular organization on their mind. And the horse is not as willing to go along when it's all about the vision and not more of a joint effort between the vision and those coming alongside that leader to accomplish the vision. By contrast, when the horse is made part of the vision and it's more about the horse and human relationship going toward the vision together, the horse shows up much differently in that activity, given those two options. Fascinating. This is, it's really, really cool. So uh, in the interest of time, I've got to keep us moving and and people can find more information about you at seekfullcircle.com. But in the the midst of this podcast, let's, because we got six topics. So six ways life is enriched. Our first one is we learn to let go. Second was relationships deepen. Let's move on to the third one, which is really fascinating to me. Adopt an enduring state of mind. What is that? Yeah, there's a saying, you know, abundance comes from endurance, right? So I think that that's just that oftentimes when we're working with a horse or a client or a customer that has a horse or a dog or any livestock or kid or family member, someone gives us a plan, we try the first step. And at the first sign of failure, we run, right? And so we say it didn't work. And even if we've seen it work with somebody else, we discredit it by saying it only worked because it was our pastor, or it was this other person who has more patience or has, you know, more presence, or he's only a good football player because he's talented. What about the guy who had to work his whole life and and failed most of the time. You know, Abraham Lincoln's story is pretty fascinating. You know, his list of failures is enormous, but he always tried again and he endured, you know. So I think that that is the same old try, try again. You know, I mean, if you're willing to endure, you will find success, even if it's in failure. (laughs) So, yeah. And people quit because they're afraid. So that endurance is empowering. Whether you succeed or not, the failure is still a win, you know, because you found a way that you might change, you know, so. Well, it's it's like Edison and his light bulbs, right? Even the failures are are a win. How has endurance played out in in your work and in what you do, Kim, with the stepping into discomfort as, as a business owner, or perhaps you see it among your clients? What do you see there? What would you chime in on that enduring state of mind? So having a personal experience with one of the activities that we ask clients to experience when they're out here, Seneca. So knowing that no one out here who comes as a client is not asked to do something I already haven't done, right? And this particular exercise of approaching the horse from behind, which is our most vulnerable position and the horse's most powerful position, coached by Dustin, we actually wrote about it as well on our blog, but the number of times it took me to gain the courage to do something that was so counterintuitive because we've all heard you shouldn't go up behind the horse, stay out from behind the horse, don't go to the back of a horse, right? We've heard that from the time we could walk and and so forth, that it was so counterintuitive because fear overtook me to the degree that I would get three-fourths of the way there. And the fear was paralyzing because all I could think about was what could happen to me. And I I had absolutely no thought process about what it meant for the horse. So 
So to looping back with us talking earlier about what is the impact on another or for another, I was so paralyzed by fear that I overlooked that the fact that the horse's trust in me is going to elevate by my willingness to be vulnerable. And I got so stuck in my own head that multiple tries, a lot of tears, a lot of frustration and and tremendous amounts of fear. But once I got a grip on the discomfort and recognized that it was no longer about me and it was instead how will I take a step toward building trust with this horse so that we can move forward together? It really shifted the paradigm. And we see that same thing played out with clients here who are willing to step into this courageous environment, have some fear, but we unpack it and we really come alongside them to rethink their thinking about who is this really about? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And I think that likely then we'll, we'll tie into the next one, which is the, the fourth way that our lives are enriched by stepping into discomfort. And that is the ability to be gracious. So that's also something where you're thinking about the other, the other person, right? Or the other being in the conversation. Unpack that a little bit for us. What is the ability to be gracious and how does that tie to stepping into discomfort? Some of these have some overlap, but the, the idea of being grateful for other people, whether it's done right or not, you know, so Learning to be thankful for Kim, even when we don't see things in the same perspective. So instead of saying, well, this is why I want it done that way, I I would simply hold my tongue and say, I am grateful to have you here on this farm in my life. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't necessarily matter if it's done the way I want it, you know, so changing that reaction of defense and changing it to being grateful for somebody else. Mm -hmm. We were in the airport the other day and this cop was dragging uh, somebody off a plane and, and he was being swore at and everything else, you know, and man, what a change in that perspective. If we could help those people to be grateful for the cops there to protect us as a whole, instead of hating them for doing their job. Right. So it's, it's hard. And and that's the part that's just, that's uncomfortable, but it's the right way to treat others. Right. So. Well, and what you're saying, Dustin also requires a lot of self-awareness. So the self-awareness piece of all this recognizing how do I show up when I've delegated something and someone has gone ahead and taken the actions to to get the task or the vision activated. And if we're not aware of how we show up in those moments where it, it looks different than it did in our in our minds or looks different than we thought it should have, we've got a lot of misalignment. And so one of the core elements of this is that willingness to be more self-aware, to truly understand how I'm showing up in situations and then how others are impacted by my choices of how I show up. Yeah, I can absolutely see that. And when we're uncomfortable, we are required to reflect on that. What is it that makes me uncomfortable? What, what is it about this situation that I'm finding described as discomfort? Why, why am I sitting here? Why am I wrestling with that? What is it I need to let go of? I I would think that self-awareness really does then give you a a fresher perspective. And and so you can deal with the people as as you've reflected on who I am, then I can shift it around and, and I can reflect on who you are and what you need from me. And then I can come out of that with just a little more grace, just a little more kindness, a little more compassion. So, and I think we, we dovetailed into this next one as well, the practice gratitude that was, and it's a choice. I, I appreciate your acknowledgement that gratitude is a choice. And when we are in discomfort, uh, if I am hearing you right, we get more opportunities to practice gratitude. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> but the conscious choice behind it, you said it very well, Seneca. <laughs> yeah. And this might be one, this is saying, you know, basically put everybody else first. And, and that is true. That is completely necessary. And, and this one still being grateful for other people is a complete necessity and requires some discomfort, but there's a lot of benefits to that uh, scientifically and physically people who are grateful live longer. They have longer relationships. They live longer. It's, If you want to find a reason that's beneficial for yourself to be in discomfort, 
and be grateful. <laughs> there's one of the six that's there's a lot of benefits to us to be grateful, even though it still requires some self-discipline. So absolutely if, if you need that less altruistic motive. All right, <laughs> I can get there. I can get there. So gratitude is Kim, I've I've seen you demonstrate this and I've I've seen you in your daily communications and in the way that you interact with the people around you. Gratitude is absolutely a practice. Can you point to any places where you learned gratitude differently because of something that made you uncomfortable, because you were in a space of discomfort? You you had to make that choice of gratitude and and it it, it just played out differently. It, it, it sticks in your memory as something related to that. I appreciate that question. I have my thoughts, but I can tell by Dustin's expression that he also might have a thought. Would you like to share yours? Well, I was just thinking that, you know, there's, there are people that are just so kind hearted, you know, that are amazing people. And I feel like that's a gift. It's a God given gift almost for certain people. And, and our daughter is one of those people, but for us, I feel like it is a constant choice, you know, and we fail miserably most of the time. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Kim will just have been frustrated with me and letting me know it. And then all of a sudden, I'll see this wave of peace come over her and, and a change. And that takes a lot of self awareness to be able to do that in the moment of. And it's, as a husband, it's just overwhelming to watch and and, and empowering of us as a family to see her, you know, go from that place of I'm hurt and this is what I need to a place of, okay, this isn't about me. It's about this family and about our relationship with God and stuff. So, and I've been in relationships where they, where that was something that, that didn't happen. And so, and we've all been there. And so to still stay there ourselves and stay centered and peaceful is very important. But then to see that draw fruit out of another person and for them to be able to go and become peaceful and desire that relationship over their own well-being, or I guess over their own desire, there's almost nothing that you can even imagine. That It's just an amazing experience. So. Oh, thank you, Dustin. Thank you. So we've been talking with Kim Grantney and with Dustin Grantney. We're talking about six ways that life is enriched by stepping into discomfort. And it's an interesting topic because stepping into discomfort voluntarily, and then we've used the phrase sitting with discomfort, like that does not sound like a good idea. And on the surface, it sounds like a bad idea. But as we've explored, Kim and Dustin have shared with us the idea that we can learn to let go. Perhaps some of our control freak tendencies and learning to let go is, is really freeing and empowering for others. Dustin and Kim have talked about the relationships that can deepen by being in discomfort and the endurance that can build, the adopting an enduring, enduring state of mind and you know, just sticking with it is so eye-opening. And the ability to be gracious was number four and the discipline and self-awareness involved in that. And then that transforms into gratitude, the ability to be grateful for those around us, which, you know, for no other reason, if, if you're doing gratitude because it's good for your health, that's at least one reason to do gratitude. But we can do gratitude and, and practice that and demonstrate that in times of discomfort, as you've shared with us. So thank you. Thank you so much for that. So we're on to the sixth one. This is powerful stuff. So I don't want to shortchange it. Life is more meaningful when you step into discomfort. Talk me through that. It just feels as if when we encompass all of those previous five points, Seneca, that you just did a tremendous job of capturing for everybody, that it really shifts our mindsets to recognizing what a gift every day is. And it is so easy to get trapped by fear and what ifs that lead us down avenues that are just so paralyzing. When instead, when we have that mindset shift of all of those other ways that life can be enriched, it almost, well, it definitely, it definitely transforms our perspective on the life that we've each been given to live. Mm. I think we're less likely to show up in life on autopilot. And there's been some research done on what autopilot living looks like and how prevalent it is. And we miss out on so much when we're doing life at a high rate of speed, 
wrapped in ourselves. And I think life just has a lot more beauty to it when we think about the enrichment that comes from doing the counterintuitive and the countercultural and what seems to be anti of, of really what we want. You know, we spend a lot of time through the lens of the camera instead of experiencing the life. So we want that picture for the photo book, but we we don't actually go participate in the activity. Because it's too uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And don't worry about what it looks like. Just go try. And, or what people think. <laughs> yeah. Right. You don't become a horse trainer without getting in a lot of saddles that you don't want to get in. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I, and I'm thinking about practical applications of this as we're wrapping this up and, and bringing this conversation to a close. I'm thinking about practical applications. And, and I heard you early on talk about delegating, right? I'm, I'm uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to delegate my responsibilities to someone else. And so that's a place to step into a discomfort. I heard you talk about letting someone else help, even if it's not delegating, maybe you're in a space that's uncomfortable and a, and a neighbor or a friend or a family member wants to help. Letting someone help is a way to step into discomfort. I'm thinking about in my own life, recently we moved and there was a fair amount of discomfort in, in the move and letting, just, just stepping into that and, and going through the discomfort of the transition and, and how that looks from one space to the other, or moving my 18 year old off to college, that also discomfort there, right? You, you raise them and then poof, they're gone. But allowing myself to, to feel what I was feeling and, and be uncomfortable with that transition and, and then learn from it and, and see what I would do differently perhaps, or, or better for for, for the next one, I got another shot in a couple of years here. What are some other practical applications? Where where might someone else, where, where would you challenge them to, to just give it a try or step into that discomfort? What other kinds of things are top of mind for you? It's really simple. Those are momentous things that you approached. And, and that is times that are very obvious. But how about at breakfast, you know, the person who does most of the talking sits and listens to everybody else for once, or the person who does most of the listening speaks up and asks some more questions, you know, so game on. <laughs> yeah. It's just finding those opportunities to serve others in a way that's unexpected. So Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that. And this is the Even Better podcast. And we wouldn't be who we say we are if we didn't uh, ask our, our question. And at the, at the end of all of our podcast episodes, we always ask, well, what's one thing that's making you even better right now? So Kim and Dustin, I ask you, what's one thing that's making you even better right now? Yeah, I think for us, it's remembering that uh, there's someone who loves us even uh, more than we deserve. And and the example that he sets for us is beyond comprehension. So whenever I'm feeling unloved or unable to love, I know that that's been done for me before. And, and so I want to make sure and pass that on, you know, so that's the most important. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. This has been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for, for participating and for sharing your insights. And thank you for making it real right there at the end where I'm like, I have these big lofty imaginations of, of what stepping into discomfort might mean. And, and you grounded us with the reality that it, you know, it might be, it might be at breakfast. It might be with the little things. So thank you. Thank you for that. With that, we're going to wrap it up today. So to our listeners, I hope that you gleaned insights out of this and that you delighted in this conversation as much as I did. You can absolutely reach out to Kim Grantney at Full Circle Creative and Coaching. She's at seekfullcircle.com. And to Dustin Grantney with Grantney Livestock, you can reach him as well. Dustin, what's the best way for someone to reach you if they were interested in connecting? Probably on Facebook, we have a Facebook page for Gratney Livestock and then my personal page also. So. Outstanding. Wonderful. Well, thank you for that. And thank you to our listeners who've been listening today. And on behalf of all of us at Your Clear Next Step, we hope the rest of your day is even better. Thank you for tuning in today. The Even Better podcast will be back with more content soon. But in the meantime, subscribe to our podcast or check out our website at yourclearnextstep.com for more information. See you next episode.